Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we are introducing our newest feature, Pitbull Tax e-signature integration with DocuSign. My name is Irina Bobrova. I'm Chief Operating Officer here at Pitbull Tax Software. And today I have uh, my colleagues with me, William Weiswenger and Hi. Dylan Schrager. Uh, you guys will help me uh, with answering all your questions. Uh, before we continue, can you please uh, tell me if uh, you can hear me well and if you can see the screen? So please type in the questions uh, module that uh, everything is good and we can continue. Perfect. Loud and clear. Yes, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, Naples, Florida. Uh, okay, you know, not putting locations, so I cannot see Oklahoma, Detroit, Houston. Uh, Virginia Beach, Dallas, Cincinnati, and go so on so forth. Uh, very good. So you can hear us fine. And um, this webinar is going to be recorded. Uh, in uh, three hours after the webinar end, we uh, you are going to receive um, email from uh, GoToWebinars uh, with um, recording of this session. And sometime tomorrow, we'll make it available on our website. Uh, we are not going to provide CP or C credits for this session, so it's an introductory uh, feature of the software, so no CPEs and no polling questions. Uh, in the middle of uh, the webinar, you can ask questions under the questions module, and uh, Will and Dylan are going to answer all of them. And uh, if we have time at the end, we're going to address questions that uh, they didn't have time to answer. So now, without further ado, let's uh, introduce our newest feature. I'm very excited to um, unveil this uh, uh, several months work of ours. And uh, finally, we are ready to show it to you. Pitbull Tax Software is now the official partner of DocuSign. For those of you who uh, didn't sign even a single PPP application or you live under the rock and you don't know what DocuSign is, DocuSign is the world's leader in e-signature solutions. Um, I have posted here some facts about a DocuSign. So they have more than half a million of paid customers and um, hundreds of users worldwide. Top global technology companies, pharmaceutical companies, and financial services companies use DocuSign as their e-signature solution. And uh, 800 federal, state, and local government agencies um, as well. So now we are the official partner of DocuSign, and uh, all our forms and letters can be e-signed through DocuSign. So which exactly forms and documents under uh, payable tax e-signature integration with DocuSign you can find? All IRS and state forms that are created in payable tax. That means every single form, 2848, 43, uh, 433A, uh, 433F, 433D, every single IRS and state forms uh, created in payable tax can be sent to your client for electronic signature. All letters created in Pitbull Tax, including customized letters that you create in your practice. So, and on every single form and letter, we pinned all signatures, dates, titles, uh, and initials fields. So you don't have to do it uh, yourself. So we've done a lot of work on your behalf, and we've pinned all those placeholders for signatures and dates and so on and so forth in IRS forms and letters that created in Pitbull Tax. You can also send for e-signature all files uploaded on the files menu or shared uh, by your clients via client portal. So every single uh, one of those. And finally, any external files uh, that you can upload from your machine, including e-file authorization forms, can be sent to your to your clients for e-signature with DocuSign. And believe it or not, but DocuSign supports over 900 different file formats. 
it's not just PDF, uh, Word, or um, Excel spreadsheet. It's every single uh, format that you can think of. And uh, I personally don't know 900 uh, file formats. If you do, you are very, very technologically savvy. But DocuSign supports every single uh, file format that um, you will um, encounter in your practice. And like I said, for IRS forms and letters, we've pinned every single um, signature placeholder and name placeholder and date. For e-file authorization forms, even though they are not um, created in Pitbull Tax, like Form 8879 series, we have pinned the signatures and dates in those forms as well. So we've done some leg uh, work for you, so you don't have to do it. So can we actually assign IRS forms? Why we have introduced this feature when we know that we cannot assign IRS forms? It's not actually true. So we can still e-file authorizations form 8878 and 8879 series. So those have been available for um, electronic signature for a while. But we are concerned about tax resolution forms and mainly 2848 and 8821 forms that we use very, very fr frequently in our line. Until coronavirus situation, until March 27, 2020, it was not possible to send any of the IRS forms for electronic signature. However, it has changed. So on March 27, 2020, the IRS issued their first IRS memorandum in response to COVID. And uh, this memorandum allowed electronic signatures on most uh, in collection information um, forms and other IRS forms, including case-specific power of attorney. In your handout materials, uh, in your handout section, I uploaded this memorandum, both of them that we're going to discuss, and I'm going to show you uh, the first one. So this is a memorandum from March 27, 2020, and I highlighted the second paragraph right here. So the categories of documents included in the scope of this memorandum are extension of statute of limitations on assessment or collection, waivers of statutory notices of deficiency and consents to assessment, agreements to specific tax matters or tax liabilities, closing agreements, and any other statement or form needing the signature of a taxpayer or representative traditionally collected by IRS personnel outside of standard filing procedures. For example, a case-specific power of attorney. So this memorandum actually allows uh, e-signature on IRS forms, including case-specific power of attorney. That means if you work with revenue officer or you deal with ACS or PPS, you can still fax them e-signed power of attorney or any other forms that um, is necessary for your case. For example, you are establishing CNC status over the phone and you need 433F, you can e-sign it and send it over um, while you're on the phone um, by fax to the IRS person you are talking uh, to. However, if you notice, this memorandum was issued on March 27, 2020, and it expired. It expired in July 15th. You would say, Irina, wake up. It's August 10th. So why are you talking about this memorandum? Well, the good news, this memorandum got extended. So on June 12, 2020, the IRS issued the second memorandum on this uh, topic. And now uh, it is valid and it expires until December 31st, 2020. So the same categories of documents that I read uh, in the first memorandum can be e-signed. And um, notice the last sentence in this second paragraph that I highlighted. 
This memorandum does not narrow the scope of any category of document that the Business Operating Division's policy office previously stated was included in the March 27th uh, memorandum. Even though in their verbiage for this new memorandum, they didn't put case-specific power of attorney, but this sentence that it doesn't narrow the scope of the previous memorandum tells us that a case-specific power of attorney can be e-signed. So it is absolutely possible to e-sign IRS forms when you're dealing with uh, revenue officers, ACS, or PPS. And a lot of uh, assisters on the phone when you call PPS or ACS, they might not know about this memorandum. If And if they resist uh, taking your power of attorney that was e-signed or any of that other document that was assigned by your client, you can refer to this memorandum or and uh, if uh, they still um, don't believe it you can fax it to them and uh, tell them that this is absolutely accept acceptable on the second page of this memorandum the irs uh, specifically states that they will accept docusign signed uh, forms so if uh, the software uses encryption techniques like docusign then those documents are acceptable. So we are integrated with DocuSign, and that is why I'm telling you those uh, it is possible to e-sign these um, IRS forms. So yes, we can e-sign forms provided that they fall under IRS memorandum uh, quoted uh, for um, issued on June 12th, and it expires on 12 31st, 2020. After that, we, ha we have to see. They promise that they will finally add electronic signature on Power of Attorney and 8821, something that has to be done, had to be done by January 1st of 2020, but it has never been uh, delivered. So even though the president signed uh, the act um, on July 1st, 2019, telling the IRS, you have to have electronic signatures on power of attorneys and um, 8821s by January 1st, the IRS never delivered. Not surprisingly, they always uh, delay their actions. So with COVID, they received some heat and they finally allowed uh, electronic signature on the forms, but with some restrictions. But don't get me wrong, at this time, CAF units still do not accept e-signatures on Form 2848 and 8821. So don't tell me that, oh, Irina said that it's impossible. Don't start faxing uh, your 2848s and 8821s to the CAF unit. They will not accept it. And I hear from tax professionals that uh, they still do fax to CAF units and just some of them, they slip through the cracks and they get accepted. But this is, this is not a general rule, general rule that the CAF unit will reject uh, e-signed 2848 or 8821s. So at this time, you can only uh, e-sign case specific documents when you are dealing with actual person. So CAF units do not accept e-signatures. I don't uh, want to reiterate one more time, but I just want to um, for you to memorize this. And now, without further ado, let me show you what uh, we did inside Pitbull Tax. Everybody in uh, Pitbull Tax software, all our users will have access to e-signature. It is now located on the tools menu on the left hand side and under IRS transcript delivery, you will see e-signature module. Once you click on it, uh, you will see four different pages, e-signature templates, request e-signature, send requests, and buy e-signatures. I'll start from the last one because uh, in order to use uh, e-signatures with DocuSign, 
you need to pay for that. This is a paid service. It's not something that we invented, but DocuSign is not a nonprofit um, organization. They charge for their services to us and we charge to you. So you can um, buy packages of envelopes and the pricing is between four and five dollars. So the more you buy, uh, the um, less you pay per envelope. So if you buy just one e-signature envelope, you pay five dollars. And if you buy a package of 100, it's four dollars each envelope. Each envelope, uh, if you haven't um, used DocuSign before, each envelope can contain unlimited number of um, forms and letters. So for example, I can create one envelope with um, 20 different files in it, and I will still pay only $5 per envelope. So it doesn't matter how many signers you have. You can have one envelope uh, that is signed by taxpayer, by um, spouse and representative. You still will pay only one uh, price per envelope. All purchased um, e-signatures and KBAs will expire one year after the purchase. So if you purchase the uh, DocuSign um, e-signature envelope from us today, they will expire in one year on uh, August 10th, 2021. We have also have uh, we also have ability to add KBA um, ID check. KBA stands for Knowledge Based Authentication. This is a feature provided by DocuSign um, in um, collaboration with LexisNexis databases. Basically, uh, they ensure strong signer authentication that the person who signs the forms or letters is actually the same person they claim to be. So before getting access to actual um, letter or forms that they need to sign, the taxpayer or spouse or representative even, um, they will have to answer a set of uh, questions that are found in public databases like uh, what color of car did you have or did you live in a certain county um, uh, during your lifetime or uh, have you been associated with certain uh, corporation and so on and so forth. So these are the questions that, that uh, are displayed before uh, the, the signer can get access to the actual document. And only after passing that KBA check, ID check, uh, they will have access to see the document. I think I've covered all questions about how to purchase and how to uh, replenish balance. So you can always see on this page how many e-signatures you have left and how many KBAs you have left. Um, one thing I want to um, reiterate, so you can send as many files and of IRS and state forms in one envelope. But if, for example, you send form 8879 for signature and you have a joint return. So both taxpayer and spouse need to uh, provide ID checks through KBA. You pay uh, $1 per each. So this is a pricing uh, for KBA. In addition to the envelope, if you want to include KBA, it's $1 each. So if you send 8879, 8879 for jointly uh, find, uh, filed return, you will have to pay $2 additionally. Whenever you uh, first time purchase um, e-signature envelopes or KBAs from us, we are going to create a DocuSign account for your um, license. So this will be a DocuSign um, account within our partnership account. So even if you have already DocuSign, you cannot use your existing account. You need to create your um, own account through us. And we are actually creating it for you. As soon as you make, make your first purchase, 
you are going to receive two emails. One email is coming from DocuSign and it's going to look exactly like this. It's, it has a subject, account activation. And in order to use um, the service through Pitbull Tax, you need to activate your account. Once you click activate, you will be asked to create your password for the account. And that's it. That's the only thing you need to do. And immediately after that, you are going to uh, get a second email. And second email comes from us. And the subject of that email is account setup for Pitbull Tax e-signature integration with DocuSign. Well, it tells you what steps you need to follow. The first one, activate your account with DocuSign. And I already showed you that email. Uh, we display for here uh, for you here uh, your username. Usually it's your email that you sign with uh, to Pitbull Tax. And the password you are going to create during the activation step. And the second step is necessary for, uh, for you to authorize um, Pitbull Tax to send e-signature envelopes on your behalf to your clients. So for this step, you need to click on this button allow and log into your DocuSign account with the password that you created in step one and just uh, select that you allow Pitbull Tax to send envelopes on your behalf. And that's it. After you've uh, answered, um, you've done these two steps, your account will be activated and you are ready to send signatures, um, signature requests. Now let's talk about how you can create templates. From Pitbull Tax, you can send uh, e-signature requests for just IRS forms or uh, letters, like, um, like a one-time thing, or you can use templates. For example, for all new clients, if you want uh, to send like welcome package that will contain um, many different letters and some forms, you can create a template which will be used for all your clients after that. It's easier to create a template first, and then you can reuse it uh, many times over. I already have created uh, two templates here, but let's create a new one. To create a template on the e-signature templates page, just click Create Template. Um, enter a uh, template name. Let's say I want to do welcome package email. Uh, um, and you can enter description of this uh, template, but it's uh, not mandatory field, so you can skip it. And after that, you add documents to the envelope. Remember, I told you that you have four options to add um, documents to DocuSign envelope. So you can either upload IRS and state form. You can do letters generated in Pitbull Tax. You can upload Pitbull Tax file uh, from files menu in Pitbull Tax software, or you can upload any other file. So let's start from uh, uh, adding letters. For example, I want to create welcome package and I want to include engagement letter. Then I want to include 7216 disclosure. And I want to include credit card authorization form. And finally, I want to include Form 8821 for both taxpayer and the spouse. And after I click Add on IRS Forms, I get a warning that at this time, the IRS does not accept electronic signatures on Form 8821 unless it is submitted under provisions of IRS memorandum that we discussed earlier. And there is a link to this memorandum if uh, you're not sure and you cannot find the document uh, from the handout, you can always click here and it will open in a separate window. And if you are submitting this uh, IRS form uh, under this memorandum, you can click Add anyway and Form 8821 for both taxpayer and the spouse will be added. 
you can change positions of uh, the documents that you selected for your template. So you can just drag and drop the way you want it. And if, for example, you uh, accidentally added unnecessary letter or form, you can right click and you can delete it. You can view the form, you can rename it, or you can download it uh, to um, view it uh, from downloaded uh, files. I want to leave it the way it is, the way I uploaded. After that, in order to create a template, and there is a hint underneath how to view and delete documents, you select recipients to the envelope. So, for example, I wanted to send to the taxpayer. If I want to add knowledge-based authentication, for example, if I uh, want uh, 8021 to be with KBA, I will check this box. And for the spouse, I do the same. And for representative. So, for example, well, in this particular um, setup, we don't need a uh, representative signature. But for example, if you send 2848, you can also have rep uh, you can have representative to e-sign it as well. So since we included 8821, representative is not needed. And finally, uh, we have email subject and message, which you can modify for your uh, template. And if you uh, don't want to, just click Next. And we're going to display you all pinned placeholders for signatures, names, and dates. So rem remember I said that we've done uh, the legwork for you, so you don't have to actually um, put signatures and uh, names and go through every single document. So you can preview where it is signed. So on the recipient, you can choose taxpayer and the spouse. So spouse signatures will be in blue font here, taxpayers in um, yellow. And once you do that, you just click finish and your template will be created. So the templates will be located under e-signature templates. You can preview them, you can edit them, or you can delete them if you are administrator or license owner on the account. So the next step will be to actually send e-signature request. And to do that, we are going to go to request e-signature. So you can request e-signature based on the template that you already created. Or you, if you want to just send one form and you don't need to use template, you can just click Next and uh, go through that. I'm going to send a request based on um, the template that I created earlier. Once I click Next, the software is going to process uh, the forms and prepare them for um, signature. Remember, when you create templates, Templates are not client specific, so they are going to be uh, containing all letters and forms that you want in your template. But when you come to actually requesting signature based on the template, for example, you create a template to include form 2848. But for this client, we do not have form 2848. So you are going to to see um, the message. This template contains some forms letters that are not created yet for this client. To include it in this request, please prepare the following forms. So we don't have a spouse for this client. So it tells us that in the template, there was a form 8821 for a spouse. So if you forgot it accidentally, you can click on this form and create it first before you can request e-signature. Obviously, if the form is not created, you cannot request e-signature on, on the form. Since the taxpayer doesn't have a spouse in this particular situation, we are just going uh, with uh, these two files that were in the template, engagement letter and form 8821. So I already have the taxpayer pre-filled from the client profile. The email is pre-filled from the client profile as well. 
I'm going to uncheck knowledge base authentication for demonstration purposes only because I don't want to display all my public information uh, on this webinar. And I'm going to click next. I review that all placeholders are in the correct places. And if they are, I'm going to request e signature. Remember, Every time you request e-signature, you decrease the balance on your account by one um, e-signature envelope. And uh, if you choose KBA, it will be reduced by KBA balance as well. So that's why we display this warning message that you need to confirm your request that one signature will be deducted from your balance. If you want to proceed, click proceed and signature has been requested. Once re signature is requested, you are forwarded to this new page, Send Request. Here you can see all requests performed on your account. They will be numbered from one until uh, whatever number it is. So it will indicate how many requests you've done. So I've done seven requests on this account. Uh, it will show client's name. You can search by client's name uh, your requests. Uh, document sent you can see what has been sent. Until the document has been e-signed, you will see original documents without any signatures. Once the document is e-signed, once, uh, once you click on it, you will see e-signed document. You can always uh, download the e-signed document and you can resend it to your client. For example, if a client says, well, I never received document uh, for signature from DocuSign because all emails, they come from DocuSign. So you may uh, resend it from here. Or you can also preview the original document and you will see what has been sent. Let's check my email and I should already get request from DocuSign. Here you are. So I click as a client uh, in the email to review, do review documents. I say, okay, I want to continue with um, signing process. I click start, initial, signature, signature. The dates automatically signed, uh, entered by DocuSign based on the system date of uh, the person where they um, show the documents. And um, the document is signed. After that, in a few seconds, you will see that the documents has been signed. And our, under our send request, we already see that the document has been signed. And it has um, two files that I can click on engagement letter and it is DocuSigned on each page of the signed document you will see DocuSign envelope ID and you will see uh, DocuSign signatures and dates uh, in the letter and the form. If you want to show uh, to see the certificate you click on the download and you will see certificate from the DocuSign authenticating the signature that it was uh, uh, when it was signed at what IP address and with all required um, information uh, from DocuSign. Once the client signs, e-signs your documents, they will also be saved on the files menu automatically. You will have a second, something is not loading. You will have a DocuSign folder created. The first time the client e-signs uh, any request from you, uh, you will see a DocuSign folder and signed documents all in one file, including certificate, will be displayed uh, on your screen.
Okay. So this is how you uh, make requests and how you view e-signed documents and uh, upload it. Let me get back to my presentation. And today only, uh, we are offering all our users uh, to get 10% discount on Pitbull Tax e-signature integration with DocuSign plans. You can use promo code DocuSign only today until midnight Eastern time. You can uh, place your uh, order online under your account um, by going to left menu and selecting e-signature by e-signature message. Uh, or you can call our phone number 877-474-8285 and uh, ask representative to help you with the purchase. Um, I'm going to repeat it that this is never going to be discounted again. So uh, since we do not control the pricing with DocuSign, we cannot discount this product. This is the only introductory discount that you will get on DocuSign plans. So if you uh, plan to use it, please take advantage and get 10% discount with promo code DocuSign. I just want to um, make sure everybody in the webinar knows about our Pitbull Tax Institute offerings uh, about Pitbull Tax in-house workshop. Uh, it's offered both in the beginners and advanced levels. It's three days live class. It's not recorded. It's not webinar. It's not um, anything uh, virtual. So it's live class uh, here in our office in Coral Springs, Florida. And uh, CPAs can earn 21 uh, CPE credits and enrolled agents can earn 18 CE credits for this program. And you will learn in full uh, detail how to use Pitbull Tax software. Uh, you will learn how to create tax resolution uh, cases, how to prepare collection information forms. Uh, you will have uh, practice on case studies that we offer during these classes. So trust me, after uh, attending this workshop, you will be a go-to expert in Pitbull tax and tax resolution. So I highly encourage you to um, attend uh, one of these uh, workshops. Due to COVID, we had to reduce number of people for each class. So we accept only six uh, people per class uh, this year so far. And um, all classes except for October, November, and December have been sold out already. So we have one seat in October and one seat in November, and I think two seats in December. So if you were thinking uh, to attend, please do so quickly because they will be sold out uh, in no time. And um, probably very soon we'll uh, post a schedule for next year. So now I'm ready to answer all your questions. I'm sure you must have some. Will, Dylan? How are we doing with questions? Questions are, we've got a couple questions and a lot of them um, are regarding the, um, you know, if the CAF unit will take the um, electronically signed uh, power of attorney. I think Irina said that they they won't. So um, unless it's like, I think you have to have like a IRS agent on the phone, right, Irina? And it has to be yes. case specific. CAF unit will not accept um, e signatures on 2848 and 8821. Um, so, these memorandums that I quoted uh, during this webinar will not uh, fly for the CAF unit uh, applications. So, you actually uh, need to work with a revenue officer or ACS or PPS personnel on the phone in order to send them e-signed power of attorney. And this is actually what uh, I do nowadays um, anyway, because the processing time since CAF unit opened on June 8th are way, way, way too long. So whenever I get a new client, I don't wait. I call the same day I have uh, signed 2848. 
and I fax it over to them and get transcripts that I need uh, uploaded to my secure mailbox. Secure mailbox uh, then send it to Pitbull Tax, and I get all my analytical reports generated in 15 minutes or less. So this is what I do, but you cannot send e signed 2848-8821 just yet to CapUnit. They promise early 2021 that it will be available. So when they do, trust me, you will be the first to know it from us, but we are ready. We are ready with DocuSign. Any other questions, Will Dylan? Um, there's uh, another question about uh, if you receive an email notification once a, a client signs the document yes. to alert you. Yes, um, both a signer and um, requester of e-signature will get email notification that um, the signing process has been completed and it will have a link to the signed documents right there. So yes. All right. Let's see. Um, uh, okay, can you use Zapier to integrate with DocuSign? It's another question here. I'm sorry, which one? Can you use Zapier to integrate with DocuSign? Not sure. Uh, I can Zapier integrate with DocuSign. Um, I don't think uh, just yet. I see a question here, but I think uh, it may be it maybe was asked earlier before I went into the IRS memorandums. Uh, we are not seeing that it's okay to e sign 2848-8821. Do you have anything from the IRS that confirms this? Yes, I do, and uh, it's in your handout. So those IRS memorandums you can quote and uh, get a signature on 2848-8821 only if you work on a case specific um power of attorney so if only if you work with uh, a person uh it's not accepted by uh, cap units okay uh, another question i see here though is um can a client hand sign on their phones so will they be able to sign the e-signatures on their phones Yes, uh, they absolutely can. So it's uh, totally um, compatible with mobile phones. So instead of uh, pre-selecting the style from DocuSign, they can uh, choose to draw their signature and initials. So yes, it's absolutely possible. It's possible with both ways if you are working on a desktop or mobile device. So you can draw your signature instead of uh, using selected docker sign and sometimes some people say it's more like plausible signature trust me i hear a lot of stories that people they use docker sign and then they erase the docker sign marks from the document and send it and say it's originally signed document i don't think it's right but this is what we hear and uh this is uh not something that I'm telling you to do, okay? I do not recommend that way. Anything else? Okay, does IRS now allow e-signature for, okay, I think I answered that. Is IRS accepting e-signature for power of attorney now? Well, it's the same question over and over. That's why I stayed on this slide for a long time and I reiterated it multiply multiple times. At this time, CAF unit does not accept e-signatures on Form 2848 uh, and 8821. Unfortunately, it's not. That's why I put a lot of sad faces here. I wish they were accepting it, but they do not accept it at this time. But there is a workaround, so I don't want for uh, to wait for CAF units anyway, and I fax my power of attorney to the agent on the phone, and if they resist accepting uh, my e-signed document, I quote this memorandum, and they have no other choice. Yes, you can talk to supervisor if uh, they still uh, provide some resistance, but this is official IRS um, memorandum. 
that you can quote. So once an IRS agent receives a 2848 that has electronic signature, will they uh, or can they forward to CAF and legitimately uh, legitimize the 2848? No. If you send it uh, to uh, PPS, they will not forward it to CAF unit. Even if it's uh, right now, the policy is even if it's a handwritten signature, they are not forwarding to CAF unit because CAF unit is still awfully backlogged. So after reopening, after COVID um, shutdown, they still cannot process all of them. I have six power attorneys that are hanging in there. We faxed it on June 8th, still not processed. It's August 10th, for God's sake, two months. And we already refaxed it uh, about two weeks ago, and they are still not processed. These are though for non-residents, so I don't know, maybe they prioritize somehow that uh, non-residents are not, um, they do not have as much priority as regulars. But um, a lot of power attorneys and 8821s are still not processed. Um, do you receive email notification once a client signs? Yes, I answered that. Um, can client hand sign? Yes, you can. What was the code for the 10% again? DocuSign, very easy. All caps, DocuSign. Um, not signature automatically generated, but DocuSign. Yes, I think I answered. Yes, it can be handwritten signature, so uh, you can uh, your client can draw it. Absolutely. I don't see the DocuSign when I log in. Uh, make sure you are administrator on the account or license owner because if uh, you are not you um, well you always should have to uh, should see the e-signature on um, the left hand side under tools you cannot work with it if you are a regular user your uh, account uh, administrator can go to uh, users and under permissions they can give you uh, give you full access to um, DocuSign module. So if uh, for example if you have multi-user account with us um, all your users can use this DocuSign. For example you can create multiple templates and your uh, users can send it to clients, for example, whoever is responsible for that particular client, they can send them welcome package with all the forms uh, required uh, for, for them to sign. And uh, however, you can block your users from using DocuSign. So under users, permissions, manage permissions, you can uh, go to content tab and block access to DocuSign because uh, all your users will be uh, debiting e-signatures from your actual balance. So if you're not sure you want to allow all users to use it, you can actually block access. Um, and uh, same way with um, e-signature templates, uh, when, once you create, you can uh, block access uh, to modify it uh, and delete those templates because you as administrator you do you did the uh, the work you placed all uh, placeholders and uh, then someone uh, accidentally deletes it one uh, thing that um, I think I didn't show you uh, is when you are requesting signatures um, on 8879s for example so this will be something that you upload um, as a file because we do not generate those forms in Pitbull Tax. Uh, you know that we are tax resolution software, we are not tax prep software. So uh, under upload file, we created two options. One is a custom file and the, the other one e-file authorization. So you can actually uh, select from five different options, 8879 for a single taxpayer, 8879 MFJ, so joint, um, return, 8879S, uh, S Corporation uh, authorization, 8879C, C Corp, and 8879PE for a partnership. So you can select any of this form, upload a file, for example, 
And um, I think I have somewhere sample. Okay. I can upload this sample and it's going to have already the signature and dates pinned in this um, particular form. So I don't have a spouse. So you see that on 8079, we pinned the placeholder for signature and the date signed already. So any e-file authorization forms you can uh, do very quickly. And when you create e-signature and you don't have balance just yet, you can buy uh, signatures uh, right there or replenish balance. Um, you might have mentioned what is the pricing for the signatures? Is it per signature or per request? How much signature request? Okay, so let me show again the uh, the pricing per envelopes. So it's if you're sending just one, it's five dollars per uh, envelope, and each envelope can contain a limited number of files and uh, forms and letters. Uh, if you buy a package of hundred, it's four dollars each. And if you want to add KBA uh, knowledge based authentication ID check, you pay one dollar each. So you just select how many you want, and you will uh, get it multiplied by one dollar. So, for example, if I want to buy 10 envelopes and 10 KBAs, so my price will be $58 here. And you go through the same uh, process as you add any optional features. Um, Pitbull tax integration with um, Do DocuSign is available for every single license types, even one-time use, which uh, we never had any add-ons for one-time use licenses, but one-time use license owners, you can request e-signatures as well uh, from your accounts. Okay, e-signature does not appear on my screen and I'm the admin on the account. Try to clear your cache uh, in uh, the browser. Uh, close the browser, reopen, login, and you should see it under e under Tools menu, right under IRS Transcript Delivery. If not, give us a call, and uh, we'll definitely help you to um, see it. Can you get free test file? No, sorry, we cannot uh, provide free test files. And um, I don't see it on my tool, so I, I think a lot of users uh, cannot see it. Try to clear cache in your browsers and uh, see if uh, you can see it after that. If not, give us a call and we'll quickly resolve this issue. Okay, at this time, I think we've answered all questions. Dill Willen, uh, William. Uh, do we have everybody answered? Okay, I think they're telling me, uh, even though they are not here, I can hear from the call room uh, that they said that all questions I answered. They are already answering some phone calls. Um, I hope you learned some uh, something new today. And uh, if you have any questions or you want to uh, re-watch this webinar, we're going to send you recording in about three hours after we finish. And it will be available on our website sometime tomorrow as well. Thank you so much for joining us today and hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye.